We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly with head basketball coach Chaka Smart coming away from Pluckers, the West Campus location. We have another senior visiting us today. Yeah, happy to have you here, Dylan. Welcome to the show. Good to be here again. Yeah, how many times have you been with us, Dylan? Dylan Osidkowski, obviously, Longhorn senior forward. I think this is my third year. I think yeah. I came yeah. the year I sat out as well. Yeah. I know I did last year. Yeah, it was a little bit different for you when you when you came over during your your sit out season, your transfer year. Right? Absolutely. We talked Absolutely. about the, we talked about the frustrations that you were going through and how you process. Do you think ultimately uh, that the, just that period alone, never mind also the the development and the strength and the training and everything that you put yourself through and the coaching you've gotten from these coaches, but just the process of what you had to go through during that time has made you a better basketball player. Absolutely, 100%. I don't think I would be, uh, you know, developed where I am right now if I didn't have that year of uh, sitting out. I wouldn't have the relationships I have with Coach, uh, Coach Horn, Coach Roos, um, just a level of understanding, um, you know, of every aspect, mental, physical, just everything uh, of what it takes to play at this level. Yeah, he, you know, he did a great job diving in, and you know, we talked about this. I think when he when he came on that year, he had to go through this uh, program that Brock's going through right now on the Versa Climber, which is it's a marathon of a program. It's 15 weeks, and uh, in each of those weeks, uh, it, it gets progressively harder. And so several of our guys have gone through that over the last few years, including. Uh, some of us coaches, and uh, Dylan has by far the best numbers of anyone on there. He, he just attacked that thing, and it, and it really set a tone uh, for his work ethic for the two years where he was going to be able to play. Does it, the, by the way, is that a, a point of pride for you there, uh, that you've established the numbers there with the Versa Climber that so far have not been surpassed? Uh, absolutely, especially because of how competitive everybody in our program is. Uh, being able to say that I hold the fastest uh, Washington Monument is uh, definitely something I'm proud to say that I know Coach Smart can't touch. Now tell folks what that is again, the Washington <laughs> uh, Monument. That is 555 feet on the Versa Climber, uh, just to straight shoot up as fast as you can go, as hard as you can go. Um, the year I was sitting out, I think we had a, uh, like a standard where everybody in the staff, all the players did it, uh, and I wasn't near where I was right now conditioning-wise. Um, Coach Smart was just on everybody who he was ahead of, uh, knowing that. So you were ahead of some of the players. Yeah, absolutely. I was in first for a while. I don't uh, know first. And then <laughs> what happened was, I have, actually have a picture of it on my phone, but what happened was Dylan uh, started training, you know, on the Versa Climber. And, you know, we won't dwell on this, but it is easier for taller guys because you have longer limbs. Uh, but as he got better and better, he put up a time that was just – way out of reach for any of the rest of us. Was, I remember it was a minute 57. So he climbed that Washington Monument in a minute and, and 57 seconds. And I think Coach Smart's uh, time was maybe like three minutes. No, was it really that long? That. Was, it, was, it, was it really three minutes? No, it wasn't. But he's, <laughs> he definitely has a record. I'm acknowledging that. And, and again, what that did, I think that's so important, Craig, for his, his basketball is it, it set a tone that this is what my work ethic is going to be. And I don't care what it takes. I'm going to do what I need to do to have my body in a good place, to have my game in a good place. And to be honest, this year, and he, Dylan can talk about this some, he's taken that to a whole other level in terms of the extra stuff that he does. Describe some of that a little bit. What are, what are some of these extra things you've been up to with it? Um, a big thing that started in the summer uh, and early in the preseason was just making sure that I do – two, maybe three things a week extra uh, with Coach Roos conditioning-wise, um, either the, a pool workout, uh, a bike workout, or extra versa. Um, on top of that, I've been doing a lot of, a lot of core work uh, after practices with Tyler recently. Um, just, just constant things that can keep me active uh, on top of practice, on top of extra cardio stuff. Um, just, just having a, a healthy lifestyle is just been the biggest thing for me is, is there is there one particular type of activity you like more than others and by the same token is there one that you if you didn't have to do it again you'd be okay with that uh i wouldn't say there's any that i really dislike okay. um you know you can say the versa once you first get on it but i've been on it so many times that i'm just kind of used to it at this point uh, i think the biggest one that i'm a fan of is is a pool workout after games uh just just the recovery with that um being able to run around break a sweat uh, not as much impact in the pool, obviously, than doing something on the court. Uh, but I'm a big fan of that one. Yeah. And Craig, he, 
there's Dylan and then there's everyone else on our team in terms of the understanding of how to treat your body and what you need to do proactively on, say, a Sunday to help yourself be in a good place for Wednesday's game. Most guys are not thinking about that at all. And we tell them as coaches, and you know, sometimes we encourage it, sometimes we enforce it. But with Dylan, you never have to enforce it because you don't even have to encourage it because he's the one saying, hey, I want to do this extra. And he's the one going to Coach Roos and saying, let's do this or let's do that. And you combine that with the way that he's really uh, just taking a strong command over what he eats. Uh, and again, that's something that at that age, most guys can't do. Yeah, what's an, what's an example of what your day is like meal-wise? The kinds of things and the amounts of things you eat during the course of a day. So a usual day, I'll usually start out with um, some sort of smoothie uh, that either myself or my girlfriend will make, uh, whoever's up first in the morning. Got a few um, calories in that, I take it. Yes. Uh -huh. uh, different fruits, uh, along with some yogurt, orange juice. Um, a little granola bar. Uh, I'm not too big on eating like a heavy breakfast, just never have been. Um, for lunch, uh, I will do a usually a kale and quinoa salad that I've actually made for, for coach before. It's good. Uh, Is it? Uh, yeah. I mean, you, you lost me at kale, but go ahead. He had me over for dinner uh, this summer. Really? And I'll tell you what, he, he Amy Culp uh, deserves a lot of credit. She's worked uh, really hard with Dylan, and they've mm -hmm. got a good re relationship. So Amy... Uh, has you know helped Dylan learn how to make certain dishes that are good for him, and that was a good dinner he made for me. But yeah. Kale and what? What did you say? Kale and quinoa. Quinoa? Yeah. I don't even know how would you how you would describe that. Like a little. Uh, it's a grain. Some yeah. grain. Some little grain. Rice. It's it's like rice, but it's a little bit lighter, but at the same time has more protein. Mm -hmm. Right. It's really good for you. Okay. And, Dylan's done a great job mixing that into his diet. Okay, so that's lunch. Mm, um, and dinner, I really like salmon. Uh, so I've found a seasoning glaze uh, with Amy, a few different ones that I like. Um, either pair that with some sweet potatoes. Um, there's actually a, a corn and quinoa a recipe that I just found that is actually extremely good. Um, and then with the salad, just a, a protein, a carb, uh, and some vegetables, either some mixed veggies, uh, a salad, like I said, just something. Interesting. Did not hear any mention of red meat in that. You keep red meat out of your diet? Um, or limited? Limited. I, I, you know, the only time I think I've had red meat this year was on a travel trip. Um, but, yeah, a lot of chicken, a lot of salmon, um, different types of fish, yeah. So what do your teammates say? I mean, are they impressed by your your uh, nutrition regimen, or are they repulsed by it? Uh, no, I mean, they're impressed. There, there have been a few times where guys will have some stuff on the bus, uh, cupcakes, cookies, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, who, uh, who wants one? Who wants one? Dio, you want one? Oh, no, 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 no. Dio can't have that. Dio can't have that. <laughs> they all get it yeah, now, right? Yeah, so they're, they're uh, on the same uh, page with, with how I am. Um, but, I mean, it's been pretty easy, you know, the first week, two weeks, just to change your diet from, you know, being in a dorm, being being able to go out to, say, Chick-fil-A or Chipotle, uh, to changing that to something where you're cooking, something you're putting in the oven, taking time to make. Um, you know, first couple weeks it was hard, but now it's just... Routine? Yeah, very much so. All right, uh, we're going to continue our, our visit with Dylan Osetkowski coming up when we continue with Longhorn Weekly with head coach Chaka Smart. Longhorn Weekly continues in a moment. Out front, Ramey between the circles to the left side of Coleman. Back to Courtney Ramey to the right side, meets her long in the corner. Osetkowski, a three-pointer, good. Dio's hit twice from that corner. Longhorns have their largest lead of the first half, up five. Kerwin Roach scoop around. An Osetkowski green right side, flips the pass. Back to Dio, straight on three, good. Osetkowski is three for three beyond the arc this afternoon. That's his first bucket of the second half. Texas up 10, 59-49. We welcome you back to Longhorn Weekly. Heard all across the state of Texas on the Texas Longhorn Radio Network from Long from Learfield IMG College and seen by those of you watching on the Longhorn Network. You saw there those three Dylan Osadkowski three-pointers against Oklahoma State as he joins us now. you have a favorite spot on the floor you like to shoot from? Shooting, definitely the corners. Yeah. Corners, uh, I just feel like in our offense, that's where I get a lot of my shots uh, from three. Uh, and that's where I uh, get a lot of shots uh, at night after practice. Do you 
enjoy hitting a three from the corner as much or more than, say, a powerful drive to the bucket and being able to, to, to go up, body up against somebody and, and uh, go up and score off the glass? So both of those are nice, I think, for my body. And what's easier is just to shoot a three from outside and just <laughs> right. be able to knock that in. Um, but no, I love, I love playing uh, physically down low, and I think that's a, a extremely fun part of the game. There are games this season where it was very apparent to those of us watching, or in my case broadcasting, calling the game, where you had a matchup on a guy, and he could tell that you had the sense that you could take that guy to the hole, whether you're backing him down or whether you're catching the ball out on the wing or whatever. Mm -hmm. do, do you see that and get that sense, A, in the scouting before the game, or is it a feel thing when you get on the floor going, I can take this guy, I can I can drive on him, I can move on him, I can, I can spin on him and, and do those things that you've done? Yeah. I think a big thing that... Uh you know, has to do with that is definitely in scouting. There are a lot of a lot of teams in our league that double in the post. Um, I'm pretty good about getting with uh, Coach Barry, Coach Smart, just uh, on how they're guarding me in the post. Uh, Coach Smart, myself, say it every day, but if I have single coverage in there, I know I can go score the ball. Um, so I like my chances when it's one-on-one -on -one down there. You're due to uh, graduate in May, uh, degree in American Studies, right? Yes, 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 yes. Tell folks a little bit about American Studies other than the obvious it's a study of Americans. No, I mean, you know, tell folks a little bit about your degree. Uh, well, it's in the liberal arts. It's a history major. Um, just, you know, a lot of different uh, information coming at you on uh, early civilization. Um, the class I'm in right now is actually on different uh, communities and cities uh, on the upbringing of America. Um, I also have a minor in communications. Uh, so, I mean, I'm just very fortunate to be able to say that I'm graduating from one of the best universities in America. Did, does it, uh, your, your particular degree plan, uh, aside from what you want to do with it beyond uh, graduation, mm -hmm. you think it's also helped you just in your day-to-day -day life, learning about cultures and, and, and people and how folks interact? Uh, when, because you travel a lot, obviously, yeah. uh, with this team. Do you, do, you, do you find yourself thinking, this is sometimes some of the stuff you study about with regard to cultures and the relationships in society? Absolutely. I think that one of the bigger things is, is just the knowledge that I have from, you know, just little facts here and there from different classes, being able to, uh, you know, take take a few things that the, the professor says and, you know, see it in real time, see it, you know, where I go. Um, so just trying to take a few things from, from different classes and uh, just kind of like look, look, look it out uh, in everyday life is I think a big thing. For, for folks who uh, have followed your basketball career, they'd say it was probably interesting that at Tulane and then the University mm -hmm. of Texas. I would submit also that probably uh, with two very fine institutions of learning like Tulane University and the University, you've had a really interesting academic uh, travel log, haven't you, in, yeah. in your, your road? Yeah, no. Uh, both the University of Texas and Tulane are, are, are very good academically, like you said. Um, I, I actually say Texas, some of the uh, classes that I'm taking are a bit more challenging. Um, definitely a high standard here uh, at Texas. Um, but yeah, just the different types of classes I've taken over now five years of college um, are you know, pretty crazy, to be honest. Just some of the stuff that's being taught, um, some of the information that you know, the students get is, is, is great. What uh, would you say you've enjoyed most about your time at the University of Texas? Great question. Great question. I would just say the, the relationships, you know, I've made um, definitely with, with teammates and coaches, um, you know, going to class every day, just, you know, kind of getting through a routine. I think the biggest thing is just the relationships you make that will last a lifetime. Uh, I've been the biggest thing here, for right. sure. Great to have you with us. Look forward to a great rest of the season. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. All right, Dylan Osinkowski with us. Coming up, Coach Martin rejoins us. We'll take a look at the opponent for this Saturday, the Oklahoma Sooners when Longhorn Weekly continues here from Pluckers, the West Campus location here on the Longhorn Network and also listening on the Texas Longhorn Radio Network from Learfield IMG College.